Hello guys, this is Mr. Cole, uh, going over our uh, next and on our only video for uh, this current week um, uh, of lecture notes. We are actually, now that we've finished the Unit 4 test, we're moving on to our really final last unit of economics, uh, Unit 5. I had given you the Unit 5 packet before you left. Hopefully you found it. If you would like it and you want me to email it to you or something, please let me know. Maybe you've lost it or something like that. Um, but we're doing unit five, the role of government here. Um, this is probably what a lot of you thought when you think the word economics, you think, you know, stock market, you think, uh, recessions, expansions, things like that. And that's where we're going to dig in is how the government actually manages, uh, the economy. Um, the first thing we're talking about is the government revenue and government spending, basically how the government brings money in and how they spend that money. Now I'm going to go ahead and skip. I'm, I'm sure you're gonna be heartbroken. Um, I'm going to skip some of this stuff because it's just not, I mean, I'm not that worried about it. It's not that totally important. Uh, we're going to skip over the taxes stuff. So I'm sure that's you know, disappointing a lot of you. So yep, taxes are payments of the government. That's how the government gets their revenue. Okay. We're going to skip that, skip that types of taxes. I think we kind of know, right? We have an income tax, um, you know, a sales tax on buying things. There are property taxes where the value of your assets, you know, your house, things like that are taxed. Um, we have the FICA taxes, which pay for Social Security and Medicare, which we've talked about a little bit. We'll talk about that a little bit more later on here in a second. Um, the, the federal government also has all sorts of other taxes, taxing corporations, uh, taxing your estate. So when you pass away, if you have more than $500,000 in your estate, that money gets taxed as it's passed down. Um, all sorts of different taxes, Okay. Uh, but obviously the biggest source of revenue is the income tax, the actual money on the income that you make. Okay. So this is tax. When you work a job, they take money out of your paycheck and that money gets sent to the government. When you think about people filing their taxes, okay. When people file their taxes for most folks, they have already paid the government taxes. Okay. Your business, um, takes an estimate about what they think you're going to be at. They, uh, send out money to the government for you. They withhold it from you. It gets sent out to the government. Um, and then in, by April 15th of each year, you have to file a tax return where you actually truly report what your income is. Um, you look at how many kids you have, all these different scenarios, and that changes your tax amount. And you either end up getting money back in a refund if you overpaid throughout the course of the year, or you have to actually owe the government money if you had underpaid. Okay, the, your business does not know every little thing, single thing about you. Um, and there's all sorts of deductions that you can take off your taxes. So they just kind of estimate it. Um, and then the rest that gets paid um, once you file your return. So a lot of times you get a tax refund. Uh, sometimes, though, you have to owe on tax day, and that's never fun. Um, our tax system is a progressive tax system, meaning the more money you make, the higher percentage you pay on taxes. Okay, so here is the 2018 tax brackets. It's changed a little bit, but it's pretty much the same um, of, of where you can see how much tax percentage you would be paying. All right, what I really want us to focus on, though, is what the government does with those tax dollars and how they spend their money. Okay, so our federal government spending is dictated by Congress and the president. Okay, so just like any other bill that, you know, how a bill becomes a law, right? I'm just a bill, right? It has to go from the House to the Senate to the President, okay? The national budget has to do the same thing. And so every year there are always huge, big budget fights in Congress as they decide um, what the federal government's spending is going to be for the year, okay? Now, with this, um, most of the debate... Um, is actually dealing with only about a third of the government spending. That is because about two thirds of our government spending is what is called mandatory spending. Okay. Now, the reason why it's mandatory is because Congress does not have a choice about whether or not to fund those programs. Now, I say they don't have a choice. That's a bit of a um, exaggeration. Okay. These are entitlement programs. Things like Medicare, things like Social Security, where the way the law is currently written, my grandma who paid her taxes for 50, 60 years is entitled to Social Security money. 
Congress and President Trump can't just decide that grandma doesn't get Social Security money this year. Okay? By law, she is entitled to that money. Now, I said you can't change it. They can change it. The way they'd have to change it is to go in and actually change the Social Security law or change the Medicare law. But the way the Medicare and Social Security are written, the people are entitled to that money if they qualify for it. Trump can't decide who gets Social Security money and who doesn't, okay? So about two-thirds of our budget is that. So here's a one from 2017. So this is President Trump's proposed budget in 2017. You can see that this entire part of the graph, Social Security and Medicare, is all mandatory spending. Medicaid is also included with there, uh, meaning that there is... When they're debating stuff, they're only debating this side of the chart. Over here on this side of the chart, that stuff's already set. And you can see Social Security is a $1.3 trillion um, program. Medicare and Medicaid are a $1 trillion program, right? So most of our government's $4 trillion comes from those two programs alone. So when we see the budget fights in Congress, what we really see happening is a budget fight over the discretionary budget. These are programs that the way the programs are written into law, Congress can decide to fund them or cut their funding or they have total choice on that, right? Things like transportation, education, science, space, FBI, national defense. So things like, uh, let's say NASA, okay? Congress has established NASA as part of our space exploration, but nowhere in the law does it say exactly how much NASA is supposed to get funded. Each year, Congress gets to decide how much money to provide NASA. Okay, um, most government programs that you think of are included under this discretionary budget. Okay, you can see if we look at the discretionary budget, that's this part over here. So you have uh, the military, okay, is the obviously the most large chunk of our uh, discretionary budget, $632 billion. Um, I'm going to skip that one for a second, I'll get to that one in a second. You have veterans benefits, food and agriculture, transportation, housing, education, energy, international affairs, science. I mean, there's all sorts of stuff that they get to fund there. Now, the one I skipped over is this one. This is the interest on the debt. This is also a mandatory spending program, okay, because this is interest that we're paying on debt we have already borrowed. So Congress can't just say we're not going to pay our debt back, right? We have to pay our debt back. So if we owe money in a debt and that debt comes up, we have to pay it. So right now we're paying $303 billion every year in interest alone on our debt. Okay, so we have like a $21 trillion debt, right? That's, we're paying $303 billion of interest in that every single year, okay? We cannot choose to get rid of that funding. Um, now, with this, as the government spends, as you can imagine... The government is not taking in $4.2 trillion, okay? We are not even coming close to taking all that in. Uh, we are actually spending way more than we have, and we call this the deficit. Every year that we spend more than we take in, we operate on a deficit. We're in the hole for a year. Um, what happens when Congress spends a deficit? The Federal Reserve, the Treasury, is tasked with issuing bonds, to try to pay for the programs that Congress has ordered. So when Congress has a deficit of, let's say, $2 trillion, the U.S. Treasury has to sell $2 trillion worth of bonds. And that then eventually becomes our national debt, how much we owe back in total. So the deficit is just what we're borrowing for a year. The debt is how much we owe in total. Um, you can see a chart here of our national. This is the deficit. So you can see... That in the 1990s, we were actually operating on a surplus, okay? But beginning with the early 2000s um, and a series of tax cuts mixed with the Iraq War, and then, of course, the devastating recession of 2008 has led to a massive, massive deficit. And you can see that we had been climbing a bit more towards surplus, but as you can imagine, uh, that what, once this $2 trillion spending program goes in, uh, we are going to be in... Um, once again, in a enormous deficit uh, during this coronavirus phase. Um, now, with this, the reason why you often see it go down during times of recession like this 
is because of the way our government gets its money. Our government gets its money because they tax your income. Well, during a recession, people aren't working. So because people are not working, they are not getting income. So the government is not bringing in money. So what you're going to see happen here in a, in a few months, right, after this coronavirus stuff is over, is you're going to see that the government just spent $2 trillion to get us out of the coronavirus and help people out during it. But then you're going to see a huge drop in tax revenue because right now with nobody working, nobody's paying taxes. So the government's having a drop in taxes and a raise in spending. So you're going to see a huge deficit and a huge debt that ends up coming from that. Um, with that, uh, the scary part is that before the coronavirus even happened, we were already on track for huge deficits. Um, with our government spending has not slowed down. Um, our government has, has issued a series of tax cuts about two years ago. Um, and that has caused deficits to get really, really, really high. And when you mix in the coronavirus and stuff like that, it's going to happen as well. So um, with that, the big takeaways today is, is the difference between mandatory and discretionary spending, along with then the difference in the national deficit and the national debt, and why we run such a deficit during times of bad economic years. Alrighty, guys, with that, that is where we'll end today. Thanks so much. I'll see you all. Bye.